Supporting this resolution will send a message to those who want to change the 75-year-old rule to favor unions in an industry that's already majority unionized. The only appropriate manner to create new policy here is to amend the statute. Proponents of the new law say the election procedure under the Railway Labor Act should mirror procedure used under the National Labor Relations Act. While this procedure may work fine with smaller units of workers, typically working in the same workplace, it's not an equitable method for workers in the railway or airline industry. The classes of railway and airline workers were intentionally created to be system-wide in order to allow uniform workplace rules and prevent the shutdown of an entire carrier should there be a strike at one local. With workers geographically spread across the country or the world and working on different shifts, it's difficulty for transportation industry employees to communicate their views with co-workers and voice their opinions during a union election. For 75 years, abstaining has been a way of saying not sure or need more information, as well as no. In many companies, unions try year after year to gain the backing of a majority of employees through elections. This rule change, change, this rule change silences those who don't vote because they don't feel like they've gotten enough information to decide. Instead of requiring a union to convince the workforce to support the union, the board is seeking to allow unions to force their way in. This is a matter of deep concern because once a union is certified, there is no way to decertify it. I repeat that. Once a union is certified, there is no way to decertify it. Currently, the board does not have a specific decertification process. This makes it nearly impossible for employees unhappy with their union to organize their fellow employees and vote the union out of their workplace. 